Hey, Camp Hawks, we're at Cape and Lopez State Park. In Lewis, Delaware, my husband's hometown. We're going to take you for a tour of this park and a tour of the town of Lewis. Here, Here we, we go. go. I'm Missy. I'm Mike. And we're the Camp Hey, Camp Hawks, this is a really great episode I'm going to put out here for you. As my dog is I'm walking my dog here. We're at Cape Lupin State Park, and this, this is a special episode for me because Cape Lupin is near and dear to my heart. It is my hometown. I grew up in Lewis, Delaware. I actually got my law enforcement career started in this park in 1989 as a park ranger. This is probably, come on, Echo. This is probably the best job I ever had in my entire life. What more could you ask for to do? I got to patrol the beaches of the Atlantic Ocean here in Delaware on a four-wheeler, along with being a park ranger on patrol in this campground. So this park is near and dear to my heart. I'm very familiar with this park, of course, and I'm gonna show you some really good stuff uh, in this park. If you like the opportunity to go to the Atlantic Ocean, spend time in a state park under the cover of a canopy of woods, this place is where it's at. The majority of these campsites aren't that big, uh, probably 25, 30 foot long. When you go to reserve a site on Reserve America, pay attention to the length because it is true to the foot. Pay attention to the length of the site. If it says it's 30 foot long, that's what it is. Don't go over anymore. They do have some big pull through sites. Uh, again, but they're, they're tight in nature as far as the width of them. So you, chances are you'll be close to your neighbor here. They are $30 a night. They do have a campground store and several bathhouses amongst the campground. Now this is uh, the month of October. So I'll take you around here. You'll get to see the fall foliage, the appearance of the park. As you can see, some of the sites are not level uh, in respect to front and rear side to side they're pretty they're pretty much level side to side but your front to rear you, you're going to have to make some adjustments for example that right there and here's a good looking site right here this is c21 again you're on a downhill slope but you got plenty of room for your campsite then you have a site like this for example c23 very short length more likely good for a tenor <clears throat> but overall this park is beautiful after we give you the tour of cape and lewis state park i'll take you in town lewis to give you an idea about the small town beauty of an old town lewis it is the first town in the first state the town dates back to 1636 as the dutch landed in lewis back then they call it swanendale or valley of the swans Now there's a great amount of history here at Cape and Lopez State Park to include World War II history. This park, this land was originally proclaimed public lands by William Penn back in the late 1600s and has stayed that way ever since. However, during World War II, threat of enemy attack along our Atlantic shoreline to knock out our shipping channels for supplies was a big worry and protecting our infrastructure and our ability to restock our supplies overseas. So in 1941, the United States Army built Fort Miles, which I'll get into a little bit more later on, but I wanna show you these observation towers. There are a total of 13 towers that run up and down the shores here. Now what's unique about this, and when you get here, if you visit the park, you'll see the fact that there was a German U-boat that was captured or surrendered here along the coast of Lewis. These things are fascinating to look at. Unfortunately, due to COVID, this one is closed. During the season when it's open, you can walk up this tower and go to the top and get a look at the Atlantic Ocean, what these soldiers were seeing 
the objective was to triangulate between towers and enemy position out in the, in the Atlantic. And when they triangulated the spot through the different towers set along the shore, that would hone them in to be able to make a shot and take them out. So I'll have to go ahead and I'll fly the drone up here, try to get you a good shot of it. But again, this is one of the fascinating things about Cape Alopa State Park. Campbell Hawks. We're at Herring Point. Now this is always a special place in my heart because uh, I think our second date with Missy, my second date with Missy, I got the park ranger to open up the gate after night and I brought her up here uh, to Herring Point. It was just her and I overlooking the Atlantic and uh, that was a good night. That was the start of uh, our lifelong commitment. So. So you can't access the beach here. You can take that trail right there. Access the beach and walk on down if you so choose. This is, again, this is Herring Point. This is Battery 512. A big gun set out here during World War II. And that was a control center for that. So the towers down there and over there will triangulate, like I said, a position and fire away if they needed to. So let's take a look at this. This is one of the, probably the highest points at the park. There is a great dune where the Fort Mile Museum is. Closed no entry as people are standing in there. But down in the distance there, you, you can see the other tower. And that is Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Off here sat the Cape and Lopen Lighthouse back in the day. And I think it fell into the sea in 1921 or about that time frame. If I can post a picture of it, I'll do so right here. But there's your gun turret spot, big gun, and I'll show you the big gun as it's in the museum at Fort Miles. So here's the Atlantic Ocean. Now I'll tell you, growing up as a kid, this beach was much farther out. A lot of erosion has taken place over the years, but I would say a good another 140 feet out. Uh, when I was a young boy, that's probably where it was. On a severe low tide, you could actually see the base of the lighthouse that used to stand there and wash out into sea. But Rehoboth is that way, Ocean City, all that, Dewey Beach, all that is south. North of us, there's a Cape May Lewis Ferry going out and it's heading over to Cape May right now. Somebody down there surf fishing. And of course, during the summer months, this place will be packed uh, with beachgoers. Now those are called jetties. They slow the uh, control of the waves crashing in to control beach erosion. And you'll have another one over here. I wish we had a nice bright sunny day so you could really see this place lit up. It's pretty out here. All right, we're on the actual grounds of the, the old Fort Miles, the actual, where it actually housed the soldiers that were stationed here for this defense uh, position. All right, folks, these are three-inch anti-air guns that were positioned around Fort Miles. 
here they have them here on display they weren't actually mounted right here during the war but as you can see this was a turret for a big gun as it would run on a, like a train track around this perimeter but these are anti-aircraft guns that were uh, stationed around Fort Miles here's your seat right here your wheel to move maneuver the gun up and down traverse it up and down or side to side pretty cool stuff So when this facility is up and running at full speed during World War II, this house, it housed 2,300 soldiers and its guns uh, could fire more than 25 miles out to sea. So they, they, had a, they had a heck of a defense position going on back in the day. Fortunately, there was no attack that had taken place. Like I mentioned, there was a German U-boat, or submarine rather, that was captured or surrendered. But that's about the extent of it, the tour here. Now, in 1964, I believe, the Army began to turn this over to the state and it slowly became Cape and Lopez State Park. So those are the actual barracks that house the soldiers. Fort Mile Orientation Center, you can come here for tours if you like. Um, I don't know if they're still, the tours are still available, but I think it was like two or five dollars for a tour. So tours are an option, at least on the website anyway. And that was the mess hall back in the day. All right, this is a actual spotter's house that came off of Hooper's Island in Maryland. Uh, during World War II, you had a lot of volunteers stepping up to the plate to help the cause, and their job was to report any uh, aircraft in the area via the spotter homes. So they would volunteer to do shifts in this little house like this. So spotters were trained on identifying enemy aircraft silhouettes in the sky, so they knew what kind of, they had an idea what they were looking at. And when they did this, they would they actually had a phone line to report what they were seeing uh, via the silhouette in the sky based on the training they had to identify enemy aircraft. So a spotter's house, they were located all along the shore, they were all volunteers, and they would have a little small sleeping quarter in it and a stove and a heater, and generally families actually ran these things as volunteers. So there were some great patriots back in that day working all hand in hand with the regular army to protect our homeland. All right, this is an 8-inch gun called the Mark 22 Model 2. This gun, there were two of these guns here at Fort Miles, but they were mounted on railroad cars so they could be easily moved around. That made it difficult for enemy positions to uh, actually pinpoint the exact location of the gun and fire upon it from, from the air because you're always moving it. All right, this is a 16-inch gun, the same type of gun you would see on a battleship. This gun had a 25 mile range. All right, so this is an armor piercing round that this gun would fire. This is a 48 inch steel block. And it shows you the effective rate of this armor piercing 16 inch round um, that would put a hole right through a solid block of steel. Pretty cool. Now we're getting ready to go into one of the old batteries. This is what the actual battery entrance looks like. Uh, certainly a better upgrade than what I'm used to. They were pretty much abandoned back in the 80s, 90s, just left to rust away until the, uh, until the state took it over and refurbished a lot of this, made it a museum, brought the guns around, refurbished all the guns. So, so it's a very cool display to see. Let's go inside and check it out. All right, we're inside the actual battery itself. Oh, the concrete. Big blast doors. Powder room, look at this. Example of the bunk. There's a whole radio, vintage radio. The heated stove. M3 mine and there's a picture display, depicting of them laying mines out in the ocean. I actually saw those around Lewis back in the day as a lawn ornament. 
So the, a 16 inch gun was mounted right here, pointed out in the direction of the ocean. And again, we're at the top of the Great Dune, beautiful sight. Imagine this on a sunny day, the entire beach is full of people all the way down. All right, as this fog seems to be still rolling back in, uh, it's getting a little damp out here, but I'm gonna show you, this is the beach access. So any, any member of the public can come into the state park, pay an entry fee, maybe $2, $4, whatever it is, depending upon if you're out of state or in state. And this parking lot is big. And this place fills up in the summertime. Now you notice up here on the sign says no alcohol beverage per permitted, to, but this place is big. So we'll take a walk up here on the boardwalk through the bathhouse. During the summer months, this is a guarded beach. During the off season, of course, it is not. Umbrella and chair rentals here. You can get yourself an umbrella and two chairs as a rental. Bathhouses are clean every day. And if you look through the fog, there is a container ship that generally that thing that big of a ship houses uh, cars. You see, I told you about some of these guns riding a rail track. And there's an example, one right here, right underneath this. So one of these guns, whether it be at the eight or the 16 inch, would ride this track. But look at the rolling surf of the Atlantic here. Actually, the water looks pretty. Nice aqua green look to it. And as I get closer, you'll be able to see that container ship. And like I said, that ship usually brings in cars. That ship will have a ramp that comes down and they drive the vehicles right off that ship as they import some of the cars. I don't think we're going to get a break from the fog today. What sucks? Again, the Breakwater Lighthouse going up. We're coming up to the point of Cape and Lopen. That's going to be my next stop. Take you to the point of the Cape you can hear the uh, waves crashing. I'll give you a moment to listen to it. Actually, right there is a pilot boat I was telling you about. So that pilot boat will leave Lewis, ride out there, drop the pilot off. He'll get on that, he'll board that ship and ride that ship back into the Delaware Bay. So that's a pilot boat right there, escorting a pilot out to that ship. And that ship is ready to come in. All right, Camp Hawks, we're at the uh, parking spot to enter or go out onto the point of Cape and Lopen. Again, my opinion one of the most beautiful spots in our country especially uh on a nice bright sunny day well, i'm going to take you out here give you a look at the point of cape and lopen which grows um, over time due to erosion and all the sand shifting up the coast coming out creating a bigger point uh, throughout the years so if you're into it you can just research the history of that point and look at all the old photos uh, as the point has grown over the years. It's one of the most prehistoric creatures still around today. This is a horseshoe crab. And there's his tail. His two eyes. And this one has barnacles growing on it. This was a young one, of course. Harmless creature. Kind of hurt when you step on him, though, barefooted. But it's really neat to see something that prehistoric dates back to the dinosaur days. So this is the Delaware Bay. On the other side of the point is the Atlantic Ocean. Of course, you can see it's much, much calmer. And right around that bend. All right throughout the Delaware Bay, there are many shipwrecks. And here's one that dates back to the 19th century. It was left over from a shipwreck, uh, probably during a hurricane what the um, information says. We see the uh, skeleton hull of this shipwreck as it goes out. This is the public fishing pier. Uh, you can come out here, throw your line out, 
and fish all day and all night. This is a 24 hour pier. Um, let's see what's going on. Oh, no pets. This is prohibited, no pets. But you are required to have a fishing license, the Delaware fishing license when you go enter this pier. Any, any place in Delaware, if you're going fish, you gotta have a Delaware fishing license. Now, in the summer months, that bait tackle shop is open. You can purchase your fishing license there or any uh, local fishing store, tackle store, even Walmart even sells them. But this is what the fish pier looks like. Look how long this thing is. Now behind the campground, they have this little mini amphitheater where they put on storybook time or show times and stuff like that. Unfortunately, during COVID times, everything shut down, all the, all the entertainment. But what's really unique about this park is that little do you know that you're standing on top of an old bunker. So once you hit these, some of these trails back in the woods, you'll come across a military style bunker. Well, it is a military bunker. Uh, well, I'll take you down below so you'll see this one. So you walk these trails or bike the trails and you'll come across some pretty cool in and interesting things you'll see from the World War II era. Okay. Beautiful, huh? Yes, indeed. All right, this is the scenic overlook of the Gordon's Pond Trail. The road with beach is right over there. Where you see the hotel, there's a, that's where the boardwalk begins and heads south. The trail winds and loops around follows the contour of the pond all the way back to Herring Point right over there that little tiny white speck over there that's Herring Point and the campground is about 3.2 miles away these two towers this is the last tower until you hit Dewey Beach Dewey Beach is oh probably five to seven miles away from here you could also bike there too you can make a day of biking from uh, Lewis all the way down to Dewey without any issues. How COVID has affected the environment. They're everywhere. Masks are everywhere. So we got a bright sunny afternoon. This is great. After being here five days, we finally got some sunshine on the beach. But the beach is dead today. In the summertime, you can't get on this damn thing. Place is packed. Okay. Delaware's had an oil spill up on the beach, and that's an oil response team out there picking up oil. And what's unique about it is they'll use shop vacs to pick up the oil off the ground. The shop vac doesn't pick up the sand, it actually picks up the blumps of blobs or oil, and then you put them in the bags. That's how you clean up the beach uh, here on the Atlantic. One of the things I want to do in my life on my bucket list is put my feet in the Pacific. I've never done that. But growing up here in Lewis, I've always been here on the Atlantic Ocean, and I would love to put my feet in the Pacific someday. These are jetties. This is what I told you about at the Heron Point video. It slows the water down as it breaks on the shore, it slows down the rate of erosion, huge rocks make these jetties let's get you close up to some of the Atlantic here that's an actual oil blob right there yeah So it's a mystery for right now for Delaware along the uh, Atlantic here. About 22 miles they say has been affected of the Atlantic uh, beach, the beachfront. They have no idea. Yeah, they have no idea how the where the the source of the oil 
but what's unique about oil spills is that the US Coast Guard can run tests like a fingerprint test and determine where that oil originated from and how long it's been how long how old it is and all that kind of stuff so they can actually fingerprint oil and determine a source potentially that way but yeah unfortunately there's some but they'll get it cleaned up and get things back to normal luckily this is not peak season where you have they will have to shut the beach down and lose revenue and all that kind of stuff so but yep that's uh that's what an oil spill looks like hey camp hawks this is second street in lewis downtown lewis historical lewis so we'll take you down here to the uh, second street and see all the shops down in here All right, Camp Hawks, welcome to Second Street in Lewis. Lewis is called the first town in the first state. It was settled by the Dutch, like I mentioned earlier, in the 1630s. This town is about 2,700 to 2,800 people in population, and it was uh, incorporated in the uh, early 1800s, about 1810. It's about four and a half square miles. It, has, it is a fabulous walking town. Some of the very interesting things you might want to check out while you're there is the St. Peter's Episcopal Church, which is right there. This was built in the early 1700s and houses some of the oldest tombstones in Delaware. Very interesting to see. We're at the Rosen Crown. Rosen Crown in town, Lewis. I'll, I'll, get, I'll, I'll get up since we're chronified. Yeah. You got the slider? Mm -hmm. Bob got the crown burger. Crown burger. I got the classic burger. Missy got the sliders. 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 Crab cake without Crab a cake. bun and an apple fennel coleslaw. Apple fennel coleslaw. That looks good. Mm. And Lagunitas. Lagunitas. All right, to the east of 2nd Street is Front Street, and this is my favorite museum. Uh, there's several in the town of Lewis, but this is my favorite. This is called Cannonball House. This was built in 1765, and the Lewis Historical Society adopted this as a maritime museum. You, saw, you, see, you see the cannon right there, the cannonball, rather. As a, it was a victim of the War of 1812. It was bombarded in 1813, and an actual cannonball struck this house. You can learn more about this uh, through the Lewis Historical Society, or, or you can pause that and read that sign right there. It's also it's also on the National Registry of Historical Places. All right, this is the Lewis and Rehoboth Canal. It was dug out by the Army Corps of Engineers from 1913 and 1916, be intended as a freight or shipping route uh, between Lewis and Rehoboth. This is a public dock, so you can push off this dock. Now I'm going to walk you up to the War of 1812 Memorial Park. Uh, you can pause this right here if you'd like to take a look at that. But during the bombardment of 1813, the British actually bombarded the town with cannons, and the town created this park to commemorate the two-day bombardment of the British to Lewis. So please, if you're at Cape Palopa State Park, visit this small town. It is adorable. You're going to enjoy the day. It's a great walking town. All right, let's wrap this video up. As many and I sit in the deck for a happy hour, and we'll give you a review. Hey, Cape Palopa, it's happy hour. We're out here on the deck of our Momentum 395. Camp and juice. She's drinking Camp and juice. I'm drinking uh, bourbon. Anyway, we're wrapping up our week here at Cape Palopa State Park. What'd you think? It's a state park. It's a state park. Um, it's has, an older older state park, so the sites are going to be tight. Very small, yep. and you're on top of each other. Like, your backyard is, is... Your backyard is your neighbor's front yard. Yeah, so... But it's okay. I mean, most people don't, from what we found, don't come here to stay here. They come here to go use the trails and go in town, which is what we liked about it. We biked and biked and biked all week. Um, lots of biking trails. Lots of biking, walking. And like I said in the video, you can bike to Rehoboth, you can bike to Lewis. Yeah. It's all within five to six miles. Yeah. So, so yeah, we had, I mean, there's lots of restaurants. So if you want something that's to do outside the state park. <laughs> outside. I guess the neighbors have a birthday. They're FaceTiming. Yeah. Um, but no, the sites are all paved. A lot of tent campers. 
Um, there's only probably maybe 10 sites that are big rig friendly. Maybe there could be more, I could be wrong. Yeah, check, check the uh, state park map out online. Yeah. Um, it's, it's run through Reserve America, so when you book a site, it's going to be on Reserve America. Yeah. The park is beautiful. I mean, where else can you stay on the, on the Atlantic coast for $30 a night? Yeah. You're not going to get that on, in Delaware for 30 bucks a night, anything. Yeah, if you want to book here at Cape Columbus State Park, you got to do it well in advance. Yeah. Especially if you've got a big rig, you're very limited on spots. Uh -huh. uh, okay, sorry. All right, I'm done. That's it. All right, well, thanks for watching. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching uh, this tour of Cape and Lupus State Park and the town of Lewis, uh, near, and dear, to, near and dear to my heart. Born and raised, Born and but raised. then I took him away. Yep, this girl from Bridgeville snagged me. It's because we can't afford to live over here. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Lewis has boomed, and the property values have gone crazy since the 80s. So, can't afford to live over this part of town anymore. Um, however, it's good to come back to your roots. This brings back many memories as a park ranger here, and this park has definitely changed since uh, 1989, since I worked here. So, but thanks for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe below. Ring the bell for no future notifications of any videos. What else? Hey, we are, we're a brand ambassador for FiresideOutdoor.com. Get 15% off your pop-up pit with using code MCOOK15. Or anything from there, correct? Yeah, anything on your site. We have an RV specific Amazon supply store. All your RV needs are right in our Amazon supply store. Shop our Amazon Campaholic supply store. For your camp camping supplies, your RV supplies, and anything else. Just search for it. Search for it. Yep. Search for it. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. Cheers. And I didn't